This is ProBlogger. Good morning and welcome to episode 198 of the ProBlogger podcast. My name is Darren Rouse and I'm the blogger behind ProBlogger.com, a blog, podcast, event, job board and a series of ebooks all designed to help you as a blogger to grow your audience, to create amazing content that's going to change your audience's life in some way and to build profit around your blog. Now, in today's episode, in episode 198, I want to talk to you about that topic of making money from your blog, building a profitable blog. More specifically, I want to tackle a question from one of our readers from the Facebook group who's been blogging for a while now without monetizing. She's actually built up a bit of an audience, some archives of content, but is wondering which income stream she should try to add to her blog first. In today's episode, I want to share with you six different income streams that might be a possibility for this particular blogger. These are six income streams that I see bloggers often starting with. And at the end of presenting the six, I want to nominate my favorite one that I think could be a good place to start for many bloggers. So if you've been wanting to start to monetize your blog, whether you're a new blogger or an established one, or maybe you've been monetizing for a while and want to add another income stream, this episode is for you. You can find today's show notes where I will be listing some further reading and listening over at problogger.com forward slash podcast forward slash 198. Also, you can join our Facebook group and connect with other bloggers on this same journey of monetizing their blogs. The Facebook group is over at problogger.com forward slash group. Lastly, if you are in America, in the US, check out our upcoming Dallas event, which I will be co-hosting. We've got a great lineup of speakers, including Kim Gast, Pat Flynn, Andrea Vahl, and myself, as well as a, a range of other bloggers and online entrepreneurs. You can get details of this event, which is happening in October. I think it's the 24th and 25th of October. You can get those details at problogger.com forward slash success. And if you use the coupon code SUCCESS17, all caps, you'll get $50 off over the next couple of weeks. But don't wait too long on that because that discount won't last long. All those details will be on the show notes today. And uh, I think it's time we got into today's episode. Creating great content. Finding an audience. Building engagement. Monetizing your blog. This is Pro Blogger. So I got a message from Danielle, who's one of our Facebook group members this morning, uh, and she said in her message, and uh, she gave me permission to share this, I saw your recent Facebook Live on how to make money blogging, and I love the idea of adding multiple income streams to a blog. That's something I did cover in that Facebook Live recently. But as a blogger who's been blogging for a while and has a medium-sized audience, but who's never monetized, what income stream should I add first? Thanks, Danielle. Now, thanks for the question, Danielle. I do appreciate that. If you do have questions at any time, pop them into the Facebook group or send me a message if you uh, would like to do that as well. On the group would be um, great because that way we can answer it publicly. But there are a few options for you, Danielle, and as is often the case with questions that I'm asked about blogging, the answer is often it depends. It really does depend, and there are a number of factors that are going to help us to work out what income stream should work best for you. Now, some of the factors that you will need to ponder, and I guess you need to think about as you're listening to some of what I'm about to suggest, are different factors will impact the the income stream that you choose. So, some of the factors might include your topic. You know, some topics lend themselves very well to different income streams, whereas other topics don't at all. For example, um, I found uh, in talking to many bloggers who blog about um, spirituality, Um, of different faiths um, or politics that advertising doesn't always work so well on some of those, particularly advertising with advertising networks like Google's AdSense. So topic is going to come into it. Um, Even more important than topic though is your reader's intent. So the question is, why are readers on your site? If you can really tap into that, why are they there? 
you will um, hopefully begin to see some opportunities to monetize. For example, if your readers are on your site learning, wanting to learn information, they, w- they want information of some type, they want teaching, they want how-to information, then that's going to lend itself to monetize by selling information, so information products, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. If people are there because they want to connect with other people who share a, um, a similar interest or a similar life situation, it may be harder to sell information, but it might be easier to sell them into a membership community. So ask yourself the question, why are readers on my site? What is it that they're there for? Because that might help to reveal the right income stream. Some other factors that come into play, your audience's size. Um, Whilst you always find that as you grow your audience, your income will grow with most of the income streams I'm going to talk about today, um, some of them are almost not worth trying if you've got a tiny audience. Uh, For example, Google AdSense, Um, you're not going to make much on it at all unless you have a sizable audience. Um, Your audience's location is another factor. Some locations monetize better with Google AdSense, with um, things like Amazon. Amazon's affiliate program. Uh, If you have an audience who is all in the one location, whether that be in the one country or even the one state or even the one town, I know some of the bloggers in our Facebook group have very localized blogs, then they will lend themselves to different types of income streams. For example, I know one blogger who um, has a blog on Melbourne and they monetize their blog by selling um, advertising on their blog to Melbourne businesses. So that really lends itself very well to that. So your audience is located. Also, the source of your traffic, you'll find that some different types of traffic will monetize differently. So traffic coming in from search engines might do better with Google AdSense, but traffic coming in from social media um, might do better with affiliate. And really, it's going to depend on your certain situation. I'm generalizing a little bit there. Email, I find, works really well when you're selling a product, for example. So the source of your traffic is, is another factor to consider. So there's some of the things to keep in your mind. Your your topic, your reader's intent, the size of your audience, the location of your audience, the source of your traffic, these types of things, it's worth knowing what they are because as I go through these six different income streams that you might want to consider, those factors will come into play. You're listening to Pro Blogger. Okay, so let me outline six of the options. Now, by no means are these the six only options. These are just six of the most common things that I see bloggers doing as their first income stream. I'm not saying any of them are the best for you, Danielle. You've got to give it a go, and I'll talk a little bit later about um, you know trying different income streams because different income streams will have different fits for different blogs. So number one, And by no means am I putting this in order of priority. Um, uh, This is just the most common one that I see a lot of bloggers starting with, and it's actually the one I started with, is um, Amazon's affiliate program. So Amazon's associates program is what you'll need to Google to find it, and I'll link to it in today's show notes. Now, some people are pretty much turning the podcast off right now because they don't like Amazon's associates program. I understand why that is. There's a number of reasons that I regularly hear from people that they don't like it. For one, In some places, it's just not available. There are some states in America that you cannot join the Amazon's Associates program, and it's got to do with tax and the the legal um, aspect of it. I don't really understand it because I'm not in one of those jurisdictions. Other people might be from other parts of the world where there's not an Amazon store, and they're legitimate reasons not to do it. But often the complaints I hear about Amazon's program are that the commissions are quite small. Um, They are. The commissions that you make on Amazon when you recommend a product and someone buys that product, you earn a little commission and the commissions are quite little. They're like start at, I think, 4%. Um, depending on the products, it can go a little bit higher. I have had commissions up to 8 or 10%. Um, so it's not a, a massive commission that you get, particularly if you're recommending low priced products. If you're recommending a $10 ebook and you're earning 4%, not a lot there, which I understand. Other people complain about Amazon because the cookies don't last long. So if you send someone into Amazon, if they make a purchase, I think it's within 24 hours you get a commission, but after that you don't. Um, I will need to check how long that cookie lasts today. But you know, there's some of the reasons that I hear Amazon being critiqued and they're valid reasons, but 
I still like Amazon and I still like to promote on Amazon. And if you follow my digital photography school blog, you will see that I recommend cameras on Amazon all the time. Every time I talk about a camera, we link into Amazon with our affiliate code. And there's a number of reasons for that, that we choose Amazon even above camera stores. And that is because Amazon's an incredibly trusted brand. Now, we have a very US-based audience. And so um, we know most of our audience know, use, and trust and like Amazon. Um, They know that brand. They trust it. uh, It's a safe option for them to spend their money on. Another reason that I like Amazon is that it's not just books on Amazon. There's all kinds of products. And uh, if you have a higher value product that you write about on your blog, like a camera, uh, 4% isn't really much when you're talking about a book, but if you're selling a $2,000 camera, it kind of adds up over time. And that's one of the reasons that I particularly like it. Another reason I like Amazon is that there's more than just books on Amazon. There's, there's, There's products from almost every category that you can think of. And people tend, once they're in Amazon, to start surfing around. And I can see, I actually recommended a lens on Amazon yesterday from my Facebook page, and no one bought the lens, And but I can track that people bought other things. I saw people buying books. I saw people buying cosmetics. I saw people buying nappies. I saw someone buying um, a necklace, so jewelry. And this was because I linked in pointing to a lens. And I would say that most people are buying more than one item. So they tend to surf around and Amazon's very good at suggesting things for people to buy. So get people in the door at Amazon and Amazon's very well refined, very well tested site. And then they will get the sale for you. Another reason I like Amazon as a first income stream, just to begin to um, learn how to monetize your blog, is that it's so easy to integrate. Amazon provides a variety of different tools and widgets that you can use on your site. You can just create text links, but you can also develop little icons and widgets that you can put in your sidebar and even a shop that you can build as well. Another thing I like about Amazon is that um, particularly around holidays, um, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, they are very well optimized and they often have really good promotions on then. If you can get people into the store at those times, people are in a buying mood, but um, Amazon also have a lot of specials and so you can promote those types of, of specials as well. So Amazon's not going to be a perfect fit for every blog, but I do think it's worth considering if you want to start out. And one of the the reasons I do particularly like it as a first one is that it's so easy. You can be up and running with Amazon within a few minutes. Just go to Amazon's Associates program, sign up, and you can be generating links pretty quickly. Now, the times that it may not be good for you is if you do live in one of those US states where it's not allowed, or if you have an audience that doesn't live within one of the locations that Amazon has a store. Um, Amazon has stores in America. They've got a UK one. I think they've got a German one. They've got a variety of different stores, and you'd be aware of, of the ones in your particular area. I think there's one about to open up in Australia as well. So, It may not be perfect for you, but it's one to consider. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more about Amazon, check out episode 53, where I talk about how I made over half a million dollars with Amazon. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it's come out of almost the last 15 years of blogging, so um, split that up a little bit. And I also have written a really extensive article on the topic called The Ultimate Guide to Making Money with the Amazon Program, which is kind of a a text-based version of that particular podcast in, in podcast episode 53. So I'll link to those in the show notes today. Creating great content and building your audience. This is Pro Blogger. That's the number one. By no means is it the best. Number two that I want to talk about is other types of affiliate programs. And uh, this is a, another option that I think is very easy to do. There's very little investment that you have to make when you're promoting someone else's products. And there's a variety of different types of products that you might want to promote. Um, again, just for a recap, for those of you who aren't even familiar with that, that term affiliate, it's when you recommend a product and you earn a commission when someone buys that product. You are given a link that has a little tracking code. And so the person who's selling the product knows you referred that and they able to pay that commission. So there's a variety of options here. You might want to promote a physical product. For example, 
uh, Vanessa. Many of you know Vanessa, my wife. She has a style fashion blog. It's called Style and Shenanigans. Um, and she is an, an affiliate link for numerous types of physical products. She's writing about fashion. So she is um, linking into clothes store, clothes and shoes and bags, accessories, those types of things. She also writes about books. So she's uh, recommending books on online stores. She's recommending uh, them on Australian stores because her audience is in Australia. She doesn't do so much on Amazon. She's um, linking and promoting homeware products, so vases and paintings and all kinds of uh, those types of things, um, sheets and doona covers and um, those types of uh, things, and then gift ideas. So around Christmas, she might do a list of 10 things to buy you know, a guy for Christmas or a woman for Christmas or Mother's Day, that type of thing. So she's talking all the time on her blog about physical products. And so when she promotes those products, they work quite well for her. Um, so if you're talking about physical products on your blog, find an affiliate program that where you can recommend those types of products. Now, you'll find many these days, many normal retailers like actual brick and mortar retailers in shopping centers and malls that you go to, They many of them will have programs already. So you could simply do a search on Google for the shop name affiliate program and you'll probably find that many of them do. Of the shops that Vanessa shops in, there's only really one or two that don't have an affiliate program already. Now, some of them will have their own affiliate program, and but most of them will use what's called an affiliate network. Some of these might be uh, networks like Commission Junction or Commission Factory or Share a Sale or Link Share, and I'll link to those in the show notes today. So there's these networks around as well. And the beauty of the networks is that they actually represent quite a few different retailers and different um, options for you. And so you might sign up for a, a site like Link Share uh, or Share a Sale, and you might be promoting three or four of their merchants at once which means uh, you're not getting lots of little checks and lots of little payments coming in. Share a sale, just send you that one payment every month. So physical products might be a good fit for your blog if you're writing about those types of things already and you can find products related. The other type of product that you can recommend as an affiliate is virtual products. And these are more usually more information-based products. And this is really where I started to ramp up my monetization. I started out um, with Amazon's affiliate program and AdSense, which I'll talk about in a moment. But then I very quickly learned that you could earn a higher commission if I was recommending an information product, particularly an ebook. So the first ones that I promoted were ebooks on photography, and I found that um, many of the people who were writing ebooks, um, you know, even ten years ago now, were paying fifty percent commission. So you're not looking at a four percent or an eight percent commission like Amazon. You can earn a higher percentage. So again, really, it's going to depend upon the reader intent. If your readers are there to learn something, information products like ebooks or courses or even membership sites can be very, very good. If you have people um, wanting to have community, there can be more, uh, you might promote membership sites. They tend to be more about where people have a forum and can connect with other people. If people are there to learn how to do something, you might also want to recommend um, software products. On ProBlogger, we recommend uh, hosting options, we recommend tools, landing page sites, plugins, those types of things, WordPress themes, they all have affiliate programs as well and they relate to the, the reason that people are on ProBlogger because they want to have good blogs and these tools enable them to, to do that as well. So think about that and you might want to do some research and look at what other bloggers are promoting in your particular industry. Um, you might want to Google your topic and affiliate program or your topic and ebook or your topic and course, and many of the products you find will have an affiliate program attached to them. Some of those affiliate networks that I mentioned previously will have lots of information products in them as well. Um, I find Share a Sale has a lot of software as a service products that might relate to your niche. Um, there's another one called ClickBank that has a lot of more information product. Um, eJunkie also has a lot of affiliate options for information products as well. Again, it's really important that you not only choose a product to promote that 
is on topic for you, but you want to also match it to the intent of your readers. Uh, Many of you will remember I had a, a camera review site back in the day. When I recommended teaching products, so eBooks on that site, people weren't buying those products because the intent of those people on that camera review site was to learn about which camera they should buy. And so it was much better for me there to link into Amazon because that's where the product they were researching was. And so promoting books on how to take better photos just didn't work there at all. These days on my digital photography school site, the intent of the reader is to learn how to use cameras. And so those eBooks do so much better. So again, match the the intent of your readers with the product. Now I do share more about affiliate marketing in episode 51. So if that's something you want to learn more about, go check that one out. Again, I'll link to it in the show notes and I'll remind you of all of these further listening later as well in the show how to build and monetize your blog this is pro blogger number three thing that you might want to try and uh, i see a lot of bloggers starting this way particularly bloggers who've already built a bit of an audience and then want to start monetizing is advertising networks Now, this probably won't suit a brand new blogger who doesn't have an audience because this is one of those income streams that does really require you to have traffic. It's not going to convert at all. You might earn a few cents, if that, using an ad network. In fact, you might not even get into some ad networks until you have some traffic. This is how I got started, but again, I'd been blogging for a year and a half before I started to monetize, and so I signed up for Google's AdSense network. Um, It actually came out about the time that I started to think about monetizing my blog, so I was lucky in some ways to get in at the ground floor. Now, AdSense does, it's another one of these income streams that gets a bit of a bad rep from some bloggers. Some bloggers don't like it because they don't make much money from it, and that could be because they don't have much traffic, or it could be that they have traffic from a location that doesn't monetize well using um, Google AdSense. I find Google AdSense works really well for US audience, but it doesn't seem to work as well for or uh, audiences from different parts of Asia, for example. Um, It really is going to depend upon that location. But it's worth a try if you do have some traffic, but you're going to need a lot of it to really ramp things up. Another advertising network that I do know a lot of bloggers who are doing quite well from these days is a network called Media Vine. It's Media Vine. And again, I'll link to it in the show notes. Now, they do have a few restrictions on who can join, but the bloggers I know who get accepted by it um, say they do a lot better than they did from AdSense. Now, on their page, you can actually go and have a look at it. Some of their guidelines that they say, they say that you have to produce original content, so you're not allowed to repurpose content from other places. And the categories that they say they accept bloggers from are food, parenting, DIY, health, fitness, fashion, travel, crafts, education, or entertainment. So it's fairly broad, but there are some categories that they don't seem to represent, like politics, religion, those types of things. And so really, if you fit into one of those niches, you might want to have a look at it. They do require you to give them access to uh, exclusive access, so you can't be running other ad networks here. And they also say um, it has to be exclusive across mobile and desktop ad inventory. And you also need to have 25,000 sessions a month. That's a Google measure there. So if you're getting under 25,000, you may not get accepted into it, but it's something to aim for again. Um, So they've got some requirements. You can check that one out if you're in one of those categories. There are other advertising networks around. And if you are in another niche and you're looking for one, uh, you might want to pop into the Facebook group and ask if anyone else is aware of any that might suit your particular niche. So that's the number three. Number four is uh, related to that because it's still advertising. It's um, what I would classify as a sponsorship. And this is, again, not going to be relevant if you're a brand new blogger because like ad networks, you do need to have some existing traffic to be able to sell sponsorships on your blog. And Danielle um, seems to have some traffic, so it might be a good fit for her. This is where you find a brand that is willing to uh, work directly with you. 
in some ways it's cutting out the middle man like AdSense or Mediavine. You're going directly to the advertiser. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail on this one because I think we'll do a full episode on it in um, the coming episodes, but I did talk to Nikki Parkinson about this in her recent interview in episode 196. There are a variety of ways that a sponsorship can work. Um, again, it's only going to really work if you've got that traffic, but a sponsor may be interested in buying a banner ad on your site. They they may be willing to sponsor some content, so they might want you to write a review of their product and then pay you for that. They might want to sponsor a series of content. So we, we've done that type of thing on Digital Photography School where we might have done a whole series of articles on portrait photography that was sponsored by Canon. Now, they didn't actually do that, but that would be an example. And it's not where you're actually promoting a product, but you're presenting content sponsored by them. A brand might also be interested in hiring you as an ambassador. If you've got a well-known uh, face or profile in, in the industry, a brand might want to sponsor a giveaway or a competition on your site, or they might want to do a combination of those things. And this is what we often do on Digital Photography School. We will sell some banner ads. We might sell a banner ad in our newsletter as well, maybe some social media promotion, and it's a competition as well. So we, we bundle things up. So there's a variety of ways that you might want to work with a brand. Again, it's going to only really suit bloggers who have a bit of a, an established profile and some traffic as well. You, you want to find a brand who wants to associate them them with you um, and and for that to happen you need to be in good standing and, and have a good reputation so the fifth thing that you might want to consider is creating your own products to sell up until this point we've largely been talking about promoting other people's products as an affiliate or uh, working with a brand you're sending people away from your site selling other people's stuff and that can work quite well um, particularly if you can get a cut uh, for what you sell and that converts but your own products might be another one now this is this is one that i would suggest most bloggers might not have as their first income stream unless they have been around for a while um, because it does take um, some traffic but it also takes a lot of work there's going to be some investment that you have to make into creating a product particularly if it's a physical product you need to get it designed you need to get it made um, even a, a virtual product like an ebook you're going to have to take some time to create that product so my first product was an ebook and what I did is turn some of my previously published blog posts into the ebook and then I wrote some extra content that was exclusive to the ebook as well um, and it took me some time to get it together it took me um, three or so months to create that ebook and get it ready to sell so it does take some work the reason it worked really good for me, well uh, worked very well for me was that I had a lot of the content already written and I already had an audience who was engaged I had fans of the site and so they were willing to buy what I was selling as there was trust and relationship there. This one is definitely more risky if you don't have many readers or they're not an engaged reader. If you have a lot of traffic coming in for search engines, for example, and, and they're people who just come in once and then never come back again, they're less likely to buy from you because they don't trust you as much. And you're going to have to really work hard in your marketing to convert them because you've got to convert them in that one time they're on your site unless you do some retargeting advertising later. But if you've got readers who are coming back again and again, particularly if you've got email addresses of those readers, I find email is a great way to sell products. And so if you've got that engaged audience and you're looking for your first income stream, it might be that selling your own product is the best way in because if you've got a very engaged audience, they're going to be excited excited about your product and you can actually make it a bit of an event and uh, include your readers in, in the, the development of that product as well and bring them on that journey. Let them know that you're writing an ebook ahead of time. Get them even to crowdfund the ebook using um, you know, a Kickstarter or that type of thing. Um, so if products are something you're interested in, you could check out episode 67 where I tell the story of my first products and also outline some steps um, that can help you to work out what product to make and how to make that product as well. Well, you're listening to Pro Blogger. The last income stream that I want to talk about is where you sell your own services. And again, this won't be relevant for everyone, not that any of them are. Um, this is another way that I see some bloggers monetizing early in their blogging. It's where they sell themselves in some way. 
Now, this is obvious. If you're a professional, you might be an accountant or a lawyer or a um, child behavior therapist, or you might have a, a business of your own on the side, and this is where you use your blog to promote that business. But I do know quite a few bloggers who didn't have an existing business, but then decide to sell services that relates to their blog. Um, so let me give you a few examples. I know of one blogger here in Australia, actually two bloggers here in Australia who, who are fashion bloggers who now sell their services to fashion boutiques and fashion manufacturers, small fashion manufacturers to write copy for their websites and also to manage their social media. And so because they've had they've built up their profile as a fashion blogger, they've got some expertise in those areas, they then offer those services to others in that particular industry. So if you've got a decent reputation in your industry already, you might do well from that. Uh, another example is a parenting blogger that I know who writes paid articles for a parenting magazine and for local newspapers. They have a regular column and she gets paid to do that. So it may be that you um, have a, a service that you can offer people in your industry as well. Again, not going to be relevant for everyone, but if you've already built up that reputation, it may be something you can do. And when I did a recent survey of full-time bloggers, I surveyed about 100 full-time bloggers. I found that over half of them offered freelancing services. Uh, I was really surprised at that, but it makes sense because often when you are selling yourself uh, as a writer or as a consultant or as a coach uh, in some way, you are able to charge a higher rate than you might be able to get from selling an ebook or two. Um, so that's another one to consider. Okay, so I've gone, kind of gone through six different options there. Um, we started with Amazon's affiliate program, then we talked about other affiliate programs. We talked about advertising networks. We talked about sponsorships and working with brands. We've talked about creating your own products, and then we talked about um, selling your own services. But the question still remains, which one should Danielle do and which one should you do if you are wanting to monetize your blog for the first time? Now, again, it really does depend. But if I had to choose just one, if I just had to choose which one, for me, it would probably be affiliate. It would probably be affiliate marketing. And whether that's Amazon or whether that's another affiliate uh, marketing relationship with a brand that's more suited to your audience, I, I think it could work well. And there's a variety of reasons that I think affiliate is the best way to go for many bloggers. Not all, but many. And that is because there's very low barrier to entry. You, you can sign up for an affiliate program and some of them will take 24 hours to approve you, but many of them will approve you instantly and you can be generating some links that you can then be putting into your blog um, straight away. But the, the reason that I love affiliate marketing so much isn't so much the income that you'll get because in the early days, you probably won't earn a lot from it, but you're going to learn a lot from it. You are going to begin to see what products your audience are interested in buying. You could be promoting a variety of different products. You could be promoting some physical ones. You could be promoting some high price ones. You could be promoting some low price ones. And you could be doing some information products. Uh, you, you can try a few things and then begin to see what your audience responds to. And this might help you to work out what you should create what product you could then build. You know, creating that product might be your ultimate goal. But to work out which one to create and how to market it and how to price it, uh, how to promote it, you're going to learn a lot by doing some affiliate marketing first. And so for me, that's probably the real beauty of it. The other thing you might also learn by doing some affiliate marketing is what type of products you could then be approaching you know, to sponsor your blog. So you might find that jewelry does really well on your blog. Or why not reach out to some jewelry stores um, or jewelry manufacturers and see if they would want you to become an ambassador. Or, or, or to become a sponsor on your site. This is what I actually did in the early days of my blog. I did a lot of affiliate marketing and I worked out after a while that um, on my digital photography school blog that ebooks worked really well. I, I didn't create an ebook till 2009, but I was promoting ebooks since 2007. And I worked out that my audience liked ebooks and I liked them on certain topics and at certain price points. And so I created my first ebook on the topic that I knew would work and at the price that I knew would work as well. 
Um, so you'll begin to learn a lot about what's going to work with your audience. I also learned on my very first blog, that, that camera review blog, that Amazon affiliate links were working well on my site. So I began to approach camera stores directly to sponsor the site. And so again, you're going to learn a lot there that can um, flow on into other income streams as well. So if I was starting today, I'd probably uh, identify a few key products to promote on my blog as an affiliate and then start with that. A few last things to really keep in mind, and I really want you to to hear this. Making money from blogging takes time. It's not an overnight get-rich-quick program. Um, Most bloggers also have more than one income stream. And that's what Danielle mentioned in, in her question up front. You know, we're talking today about your first income stream and, and it's not your only one. Most full-time bloggers have at least two. Um, many of them have four or five different income streams. Most full-time bloggers try income streams that don't work for them too. You know, most full-time bloggers have a string of things that they've tried that didn't work. So don't just rely on one. And just because the first one doesn't work, it doesn't mean that others won't as well. So hang in there. Keep experimenting. Another thing to keep in mind is that making money from your blog isn't a passive thing. It's not passive income. You are going to need to set aside time to monetize. You know, a lot of people tell the story of my first ebook making $70,000 in its first couple of weeks. I've, I've told that story from the stage a few times, and I've heard other people retell that story. But they tell it as a he got rich overnight type story. And the reality couldn't be further from the, you know, from that, that, that truth. I mean, the reality is that um, it took me two years of building up the traffic to a site. And it also took me three months of working every day to create that ebook and getting ready for that launch. It t- took years of developing trust with my audience. Yes, you can make money quickly but it's usually built on the foundations of a blog with a great archive of content that has an audience that you've worked really hard to build up, an audience that's engaged. These are the things that are the foundations for that profitable blog. So yes, experiment with these income streams, but don't do it at the expense of creating great content, engaging with that audience and promoting your your blog as well. Those, Those things are just so important. I hope that somewhere in the midst of that is an answer for you, Danielle, maybe affiliate marketing, but maybe as as I've talked today, something else has kind of piqued your interest as well. Now, I have mentioned a lot of further listening, and I kind of just want to emphasize that again. Uh, If you do want one of those income streams, here's a list of a podcast that you might want to listen to. Uh, Firstly, episode 32, and I'll list all these in, in, in the show notes. 32 is an episode on Uh, answering that question, can you really make money from blogging? And I talk about seven things that I've learned about making money from blogging. Episode 51 is about affiliate marketing. So if you do want to explore affiliate marketing, how to do that, how to um, convert better than just putting an ad in your sidebar for uh, an affiliate product, episode 51 is for you. If Amazon is one that you want to look at, uh, listen to episode 53, which really builds on episode 51. So those two might work well in conjunction. Uh, If you want to create your first product, go back and listen to episode 67 because I really do talk about my journey in that as well. And if you want to learn a little bit more about working with brands, you might want to listen to that interview that I did with Nikki Parkinson just a couple of episodes ago in 196, I think it was. She actually talked there also about how she monetizes in a few other ways as well. So it could be a good one to listen to if you haven't already. All of those will be listed on the show notes at problogger dot com forward slash podcast forward slash one nine eight. Lastly, if you do want to check out the Facebook group, head over to problogger dot com forward slash group where I'd love to hear about how you monetize your blog. There'll be a thread announcing this podcast and uh, in the comments of that, we would love to hear about your first dollar, how you made that first dollar and uh, what you would do differently if you were starting out again today. Thanks for listening today. I'll be back with you next week to talk about another cool tool uh, that's going to help you in your blogging. Thanks for listening. Chat with you soon. You've been listening to Pro Blogger. If you'd like to comment on any of today's topics or subscribe to the series, find us at problogger.com forward slash podcast. Tweet us at problogger. Find us at facebook.com forward slash problogger or search problogger on iTunes.
Before I go, I want to give a big shout out and say thank you to Craig Hewitt and the team at Podcast Motor, who've been editing all of our podcasts for some time now. Podcast Motor have a great range of services for podcasters at all levels. They can help you to set up your podcast, but also offer a couple of excellent services to help you to edit your shows and get them up with great show notes. Check them out at podcastmotor.com.